Okay, so you know when you just have like a random thought pop into your head? You're just working or scrolling Twitter or strolling to the shops and some random thought pops into your mind that makes you think, huh. Then you can't stop thinking about it, so you look it up on Google and you end up going down this whole rabbit hole of research into this one random topic. Well, recently I remembered the existence of the mid-2000s Windows Vista game Purple Place. The colourful selection of minigames packaged with Windows computers was a staple for kids in the early 2000s. If you couldn't access the internet and didn't understand how to play Minesweeper, Purple Place was the perfect game to waste away the hours in. But what most people don't know is that there's a darker, more mysterious side to Purple Place. The game is shrouded in mystery. Information on its development is suspiciously scarce and no one seems to have been willing to come forward about it. What is Purple Place? Who developed it? What is Purple Society like? What are the Cake Chef's true intentions? Let's find out. Before we get into things, I just want to give a huge thank you to Native for sponsoring this video. So now more than ever, I feel like it's important to try and be sustainable in your everyday life. Native makes soap, hair care products, toothpaste, sunscreen, and deodorants plastic free deodorants to be more specific and they come in tons of amazing scents. I got lavender and rose, cucumber and mint and coconut and vanilla and they all smell so good. I love the smell of lavender and this one just makes you smell like a field of flowers which is amazing. Coconut and vanilla is super sweet and summery, really nice. And cucumber and mint is probably my most favorite of all. It's like really refreshing and cool and has this almost like slight florally scent. It's really good. But those are just the tip of the iceberg. There are tons of scents to choose from including limited edition scents and scents for sensitive skin. Scents for sensitive skin. That's a tongue twister. It isn't sticky, it dries super quickly, and is honestly just really refreshing if you're exercising or even just going about your day. Native plastic free deodorants are aluminium and paraben free, as well as vegan and cruelty free. Plus they're made with familiar ingredients, for example like coconut oil and shea butter, you know, just keeping it simple. But native plastic free deodorant doesn't just smell amazing, it now comes in a new and improved package. It uses the same formula as their regular deodorant with much more sustainable packaging, being earth friendly and 100% plastic free. 92% of plastic free users prefer the new package design. One of the best things about Native is that they're a proud partner of 1% for the planet, committing 1% of plastic free deodorant sales to environmental non-profits, which is a pretty great cause. Native is committed to sourcing paper for the packaging from responsibly managed forests and it's all recyclable, saving 37 grams of plastic with every deodorant purchased. Three plastic free deodorants would be $39, but if you use my link and code Izzy, you'll get them for $26, that's over 33% off. With my code, you can also get 20% off any body wash or toothpaste. Thank you so much to Native for sponsoring this video, definitely go check them out, and now let's get back into the mysteries of Purple Place. It all started when Microsoft released a humble little operating system called Windows Vista in 2007. Their last release had been Windows XP in 2001, which you may remember as the windows with the green field background and the bright blue toolbars. In my opinion, the most aesthetically pleasing and best Windows release to date, closely followed by Windows 7. Those truly were the days, we need to go back to our computers looking like this. Windows Vista was originally a secret project codenamed Longhorn and was planned to release in 2003 as a sort of mini upgrade to XP, just in improving on a few small aspects. However, after feature creep set in, Longhorn began to be developed as its own major operating system release. By 2004, it was clear that the project was beginning to stagnate, with the team losing sight of what needed to be done to release Longhorn. Employees working on the project expected it to be a disaster and had very little faith that it would ever actually release, while the Microsoft co-president described the project as quote, crashing to the ground in the Wall Street Journal. By 2004, Longhorn had been renamed to Windows Vista, and by 2005, the team had turned things around around with several very competent beta builds, which we will get into later. Finally, on January 30th, 2007, Windows Vista was officially released as Microsoft's newest mainline operating system. If you remember anything about Vista, you probably remember how poorly it was received. Even though it looked a whole lot more sleek, it had some pretty bad performance issues and is generally considered one of the less stellar Windows releases. However, what Windows Vista lacked in competency, it more than made up for with its games. And this is where this whole backstory has been headed because in January 2007, Package with Windows Vista was Purple Place. Now before we continue, let's just take a moment to acknowledge how widely misinterpreted this name has been over the years. It's extremely common to see the game called Purple Place online and I spent the majority of my life thinking that it was Purple Palace. I actually even talked to one of my friends the other day and they also thought it was Purple Palace. I don't know why it's so common to misread the name, I mean I guess it's alliteration combined with an intentional misspelling of the word purple, but that shouldn't be as hard to read as it is. Anyway, Purple Place was released 
released on Windows Vista alongside a suite of other games including Free Cell, Spider Solitaire, Minesweeper and Hearts and if you were super fancy and had the home premium or enterprise edition of Vista you could play Mahjong Titans and Ink Ball. Definitely worth that couple hundred extra dollars. Microsoft brought a company called Oberon Media on board to remake the classic Windows games like Minesweeper and Free Cell for the new operating system but they also had them create several brand new games including Purple Place. This will come into play later on, put a pin in Oberon Media for now. Before we get into the actual lore, let's take a look at... Purple Place is an exceptionally simple game. Like many other games packaged with Windows, the interface and settings are extremely basic and the gameplay is simple yet addicting. The game has a whimsical, cartoony art style and opens on a small township. There's a schoolhouse to the left, a truck park next to a decadent cake factory in the middle, and a clothing shop to the right with this mysterious character in the window. In the background, a strange building with a straw coming out of the top sits shrouded in shadow as the orange sun sets over the town. There are three games available to play in Purple Place. Purple Pear, Comfy Cakes, and Purple Shop. Purple Pears, which takes place in the schoolhouse, is a simple tile matching game meant to improve kids' pattern recognition and memory skills. It's hosted by the professor who gives you hints and tips about the game as you progress. You're able to choose a difficulty level from beginner to advanced, which you can do for all three games, but specifically here will give you more tiles, a wider variety of images, and a timer. It's basically just memory match, you get a bunch of tiles, you flip one over, and you try to find a match. Each gold token that you earn gives you a peek at the tiles, and as the game advances more rounds added. Honestly I got super cocky early on because I kept earning ranks like Purple Master and Champion of Logic but then when I got to the advanced stage it was super difficult that timer really puts the pressure on. Comfy Cakes takes place in the cake factory and is a hand-eye coordination game about, uh, well, making cakes. You are introduced to the game by the chef, a rather shady looking character whose true intentions remain unknown. You basically just have to copy the design of the cake that appears on the screen above the conveyor belt. You have to pick the right combination of shapes, icing and toppings, all while keeping the conveyor belt and all the cakes on it running smoothly. Beginner difficulty only gives you a few options, but the higher the difficulty, the wider variety of cake options there are, and a timer is added so you have to keep the conveyor belt moving almost constantly. The cakes from Comfy Cakes are used as icons for purple pears, presumably just because they didn't want to make any more original assets for the game, so they just reused these ones. Purple Shop takes place in a clothing shop and is a game about logic and deduction. It's a code breaker game similar to Mastermind. You get a bunch of different features all in different colors and have to figure out through guessing and deduction which outfit the purple behind the dressing room curtain is wearing. Interestingly, this is the only game without a guide character, though we do get to see a lot of different purple combos. The beginner difficulty of this game is basically for babies, it gives you very few options and outright tells you which items you've selected are correct, so it takes like two seconds to figure out. Intermediate gives you a few hints here and there, but it's still pretty easy, and advanced is basically just proper mastermind. You get told if you have a correct feature or color, but not what feature it actually is. So you have to figure it out by changing the features, ticking which ones you think are correct, crossing off the ones that you think that you've ruled out, etc. These games are not only nostalgic and great light entertainment if you have an hour to spare, but they give us a fascinating glimpse into purple society and culture. Purples are intelligent, clearly placing great importance on education and learning. They're productive and hardworking. We have reason to believe from the delivery truck outside the factory that Purple Place itself is a place of great economic importance and perhaps a major exporter of baked goods. Purples are engaged by art and fashion. The wide variety of outfits in the shop and the huge number of extravagant cakes being produced may indicate that purples live in a capitalistic society. The white picket fence to the right suggests that this specific area is just one small, potentially residential neighborhood or district bordering on a greater purple city which we can see towering in the background. There are many unanswered questions about purple place and we may never get answers. But what we can look at is the actual tangible history behind the game. Part of what makes Purple Place such an enigma is that we don't really know who developed it. The game has no credits listed anywhere so we can't point out any individual artist or developers that worked on the game. All that we know is that the game was developed by a company called Oberon Media. Founded in 2003, Oberon Media and their Oberon Games division created, distributed and published games throughout the mid to late 2000s. They were mainly known for publishing social and casual games including Peggle, Jewel Quest 2, Galapago and... Totem Treasure 2, Dreamcatcher Dollars. Hmm. Basically a lot of slots, tile matching tycoons, and those cheap mystery games where you have to play hidden object mini games to progress, you know the ones. The ones that you used to find on 2000s game launches like Wild Tangent. Using the Wayback Machine we can find their old website which has all the games they made listed and there are a ton of them, they were actually a pretty big deal back in the day. Despite the popularity of their games during the early years of the 2000s, by 2009 over 100 employees had been laid off. And around 2011 the company rebranded to iPlay and started 
stop game development in order to focus on publishing and distribution. Basically, the old Oberon is long gone. I play is still going strong to this day, publishing Game of the Year contenders such as Vacation Adventures, Park Ranger, Volumes 1 through 7, and Art Coloring 10. But that's basically where the information stops. Weirdly, despite a lot of digging, I couldn't find Purple Place or any of the other Windows games they made listed on their site, even after using the Wayback Machine to look at the site around 2007 to 2008. Similarly, I couldn't find any interviews about Oberon Media or the Windows games aside from one single interview with a dev who worked at Oberon who mentions the game very briefly in passing. I really wanted to reach out to this developer but unfortunately there were no viable channels to contact him through so it was a bit of a dead lead. The Wikipedia pages for both Oberon Media and Purple Place are extremely basic and bare, there's no wiki for the game and even sites like Moby Games which are usually pretty good at archiving game info are barren. The biggest barrier in the way of finding some exclusive perb lore is just the fact that there are no credits listed in the game. There's no credits option or page within the game itself, Oberon's website didn't have any developers listed, and again the few people that I have found linked to the company are either unreachable, offline, or like big game industry CEOs who are extremely hard to even get a hold of. This is just a theory and anyone in the games or publishing industry please feel free to correct me, but the reason that I think that it's so hard to find information on Purple Place is that it was commissioned by Microsoft for the Windows operating system. For the purpose of making Windows Vista look like a sleek, fully packaged Microsoft product, they may have locked Oberon into a really tight non-disclosure agreement. There were likely clauses that forbid them from sharing any material or discussing production of any of the Windows games since that contract would have ensured that legally Microsoft owned it all. And since the game was made specifically for Microsoft to be packaged as a Microsoft game, credit wasn't included. That's just a theory though, and regardless of why Oberon has been so hush-hush about the whole thing, the fact that it's so hard to find anyone at all connected to this project is pretty mysterious. But that doesn't mean there are no leads. There are a few that are worth going over despite how dubious they are. Let's start with the Jeremy Zag thing. Jeremy Zag is a creator best known for producing the Miraculous Ladybug animated series. He's a pretty revered figure within the fandom and he has tons of fans. Seems random and totally unrelated to Purple Place, right? Well, that's what makes this tweet so weird. The fact that Jeremy Zag did this game, I'm gonna scream. He's everywhere. I'm sorry, he did what? Yep, he worked on the game in early production. You're joking, what's your source? He made an Insta story about it like two years ago celebrating the 20 year anniversary of the game existing. So basically the OP sources, she made it up. Aside from the fact that there are literally zero sources on this, Purple Place hasn't even been out for anywhere near 20 years. I'm pretty sure this is just one of those like stan Twitter things, like when people say Hatsune Miku made like Papa's Pizzeria or whatever. But it's still worth mentioning because leads are that scarce. I spent a lot of time trying to find people who may have worked on the game and this is like the only lead I dug up that should tell you how obscure this is. I did stumble across one other lead though, completely by accident. I was going through a bunch of Purple Place videos, Let's Plays and Speedruns to try and find more info on it when I came across a video called I Play Purple Place for the First Time in 10 Years by Some Salted Rice. Within the comment section of this video is a bizarre thread of comments by a user claiming to have intel on the game. For small games like these, I wonder if anyone wonders why it's called Purple Place. P.S. I know the game before it was owned by them. I don't know the exact details since it was my grandmother's professor that got it to Microsoft. I was just a small kid back then. The only reason it's called Purple Place instead of Purple Place is because I couldn't say Purple Place as a little girl. Lol, it was a cute thing, but I can tell you all sorts of things about this game. For instance, the school building for the card game was the first game, and there were no other games. The matching game was the second, and the cake game was last. And lastly, the most funny thing, the eyes on the building are blue because my eyes are blue. Originally, they made the game for me when I was little, then it went to the company. So was your grandmother's professor the one who directed it? Yeah, he was. The college he worked at closed a few years ago, though. I was about five at the time. I beta tested it since it was my grandma's class project. Correction to my own reply, I was three when the game was being worked on. They sat me in front of the classroom and a chair with the projector streaming the screen onto a board, they gave me a keyboard and a mouse with this little desk in front of me and I played the game. Did he have any development screenshots? I spoke to my grandmother about the game and we did have some, however my grandfather's server that had all of the game's information was fried a couple years ago so any proof I had of doing so is gone now. Oh dear. So this whole story is completely fake, obviously. In OP's YouTube about section, they claim to be 17 years old. Assuming that they were born around 2004 to 2005, the 
claim that they were around three when Purple Place came out sort of lines up, it could potentially be true. But here's the twist, Purple Place had functioning beta builds as early as 2005 and we'll touch on these in a minute. So unless OP was a literal fetus playing their quote unquote grandma's class project, this is a total lie. OP definitely didn't have any ill intentions, it's not a big deal, but it's just really funny to me that someone would make up this elaborate lie about being on the ground floor of Purple Place of all things. Honestly kind of legendary, I respect the hustle. So all in all we're not really left with much to go off. In 2013 the assets of Oberon Media were acquired by iWin Inc, another company. Basically the Oberon that created Purple Place is long gone and most likely so are any pieces of early Purple Place documentation or concept art. The things that I want to find most of all are early development documentation, concept art or sketches or just anecdotes from people who worked at Oberon or specifically worked at Purple Place around this time. This game didn't just poof into existence out of nowhere, there's someone out there who drew the little mouths and eyes and outfits for the purple, someone who painted the clouds that hang over purple place, someone that coded the tile game. These people and these stories exist out there somewhere but actually finding and getting in contact with them is the first and hardest step. While the search for intel on purple place continues, there's been a substantial amount of behind the scenes info that has been dug up from the code of the game itself. Let's take a look at… The earliest known incarnation of Purple Place was a very early prototype build package with Windows Vista 5219 in late August of 2005. Many features of the prototype build have been archived on the cutting room floor, a site dedicated to scrapped or unused game features. Surprisingly Purple Place has several very comprehensive pages so let's take a look. In the 5219 build the schoolhouse is missing entirely, the Purple Place title is missing, the red X sign is a yellow arrow and there's smoke coming out of the cake factory's chimney which for some reason was removed in the final game. In Comfy Cakes there was actually a cake rotating feature that was removed and no oh god what is that? Uh yeah so the art style in the 5219 build is different to say the least. The chef goes from this to this and the purples in purple shop are honestly pretty terrifying. I hate it. I hate it so much. Evidence was found in the game files that the game was originally going to be called Learning Fun so it seems like originally Purple Place was going to be more of a stock standard zany 2000s edutainment game for little kids. The wacky features, bright colours and weird shape and disembodied heads make them look like stock standard uncanny goofball kids characters rather than the smooth round and polished purples that we know today. While the purple shop screenshot that we have here presents some pretty horrible options, there's a whole bunch of other unused sprites. Intense eyes, some noses and some very exaggerated mouths among other things. You can really see the difference in quality between these and the final build, purple place is pretty polished and cohesive whereas these give off very big wacky 90s PC clip art vibes. Most interesting of all, there's evidence of an unused mini game called Purple Family. From the help files of build 5219, quote, Mr. Purple needs you to help get all the family members on the left side of the screen to their houses on the right side of the screen. Each family member shares something in common. They might all have purple noses or they might all have green hair. Each family is a different size. There might be five purples in a family, there might be twelve, there might only be three. When you find the family members, click and drag them over to the houses on the right side of the screen. Find the biggest families first and then find the smaller families when there are fewer purples left out in the neighborhood. I think this purple family minigame is most likely tied to the white picket fence that we see in both the prototype and the final builds. It could be, given the minigame revolves around moving families into houses, that this area was going to be expanded upon in the final game but never was. Plus, not to mention this information greatly impacts our understanding of the classic purple family dynamic. The fact that we never got to see the Mr. Purple character is a crime. While the game's prototype builds have some very fascinating information, there's a lot to be found in the game's final release too. Once again archived on the cutting room floor, there are several interesting tidbits hidden in the game files of Purple Place. From the debug menus we can see that Comfy Cakes originally had a game mode called Time Attack which seems to have been scrapped. In Windows Vista the title font is in Comic Sans of course, but in Windows 7 this has been changed. Purple Pez was originally called Concentration and Purple Shop was called Build a Purple. There are unused graphics in the game including some red eyes and green mouths which are much more akin to the old 5219 build style than the modern purple style which is likely why they were scrapped. There are unused pieces of dialogue and tips for Comfy Cakes including one relating to the scrapped cake rotation feature from the early build. There are some unused tiles from the Purple Pears game including ones titled Egg Purple Head, Lumpy Purple Head, Round Purple Head and Pear Purple Head. These don't really match with the current purple head shapes in the final game so it's possible that these were the original head shapes in the Uncanny 5219 build. It's possible that this face from the screenshot could have been the round or lumpy head. And speaking of heads, we actually get to see the head sprites for the professor and 
chef characters without all their facial features and they look pretty creepy to say the least. They've clearly just been given some extra shading under their features but it makes them look a little too Silent Hill for my taste. Some things are better left obscured, same with the game's sprites. A few sprite sheets have been uploaded to the Spriders resource website so we can see them in all of their glory. Disembodied mouths and eyes, weird shapes and this horrifying blurry grinning chef flying in from the side. Lastly there's a mysterious unused tile card called Sad Chef and a scrap lemon filling for the cake game. Overall nothing mind blowing or shocking but all very worthwhile information in the quest to document an archive purple place. All of this shows us the developers early on, concepts, the design process and how the game changed over time. These days Purple Place mainly lives on in the form of nostalgic hashtag 2000s hashtag kidcore hashtag internetcore posts on Tumblr or OMG guys did anyone else play this as a kid posts on Twitter. The game has a small but dedicated fan base of shit posters who enjoy making ironic memes about it. You can actually find people purple posting in the wild if you look hard enough and the Google reviews for the game are flooded with thousands of ironic reviews praising the brilliance of the game. So I guess you could say it's kind of become like a meme but also it's on such a small scale that I don't really know if meme is the right word. It's a thing that is sometimes brought up in internet spaces occasionally. The number of people who unironically stand the game are few and far between. To my surprise there were a few genuine pieces of Purple Place fan art out there and I did find this one guy on Pinterest who did nothing but screenshot purples and upload them so th that was a thing. There are also of course those who have delved deep into the code of the game and looked through the prototype builds to archive information on them. My hat's off to those at the cutting room floor and the spreaders resource who put in the work to find and archive it all. It's genuinely some of the only information about the game that we have out there so kudos to them. I really have to ask anyone who knows anything about Purple Place to come forward with information, whether you worked on the game, or you know someone who worked on the game, or you've found some obscure information out there, or you've heard something, just anything at all for us to uncover the truth behind this game. Genuinely looking into and researching sort of obscure games that don't have too much information on them out there is really really interesting. I love sort of archiving the few bits of information that we have, and I love the excitement of teaching finding more stuff so you know if you know anything if you have any anecdotes if you have any information definitely leave it below or like send an email or something like that even if you just have stories about yourself playing purple place as a kid definitely leave it below because I want to know that I'm not alone in spending like hundreds of hours playing the cake game for now this concludes our deep dive into purple place I really hope that in the future we can uncover more information about the game but for now I really hope that you enjoyed the video I really enjoyed making this video um, I hope that it was informative I feel like there was some pretty interesting stuff that I was able to find. I hope that we can find more. Um, but yeah, I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you ever want me to cover a certain topic or you have ideas for things, definitely let me know below. Um, I'm always looking for new video topics, so yeah, definitely let me know. Thank you so much to Native for sponsoring it. Um, again, I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you guys are having a good day, and I really hope to see you in the next one. Bye. A huge thank you to my Garfield overlords over on Patreon. Electro Kitten, Katrina Likes 5e Stuff, Fitzy, Jorge K. Cruz, Michelle Olsen, Matt LRJ, SHSL Sunsun, Doug, Jordan Nielsen, Dana Homegardner, Charlie B, Simon, John Leach, Ren Pendragon, Pom, Din Meadow, Xavier Araho, Helm Hamburger Hand, Durzo Blint, Sheriff Whiskey, The Fabu Librarian, Red Meth, Astrium Vortex, Jesse Chisholm, Brianna Robinson, Grip Gunderson, Kimono My Gyro, Joe Bradshaw, and Arcantilis. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, it means the world. If you want to join these guys over on Patreon, the link will be in the description and yeah thank you guys so much i really hope that you enjoyed the video and i hope to see you in the next one bye